Now that we have the head cleaned, uh, we can take the old shaft out of the shaft extractor here. Pretty easy to get the old shaft out. Just loosen up the screws. Take the protective film off the shaft so you don't scratch it. It comes right out. Now, you'll see right here there's epoxy on the uh, old shaft too. So what you'll have to do is get that off of there. I like to just take a, a razor blade and basically get the old epoxy off of it. Uh, you'll do the same thing for a new shaft. For example, let's just say the, the new shaft comes shipped to you. It looks like it's all part of the shaft. You would basically get some of the film off of the tip of the shaft so that you'll be able to slip it into the hosel once it's clean. You know, I don't like doing anything halfway, but I'm just kind of showing you here. Or you take a little block of sandpaper. I always keep sandpaper around. Clean the epoxy off like that. Once it's clean, now the hosel's clean, the shaft is prepped, and they'll fit together. So you see there, now the shaft goes into the hosel. Now what I'm going to need to do though, before I start installing this shaft into the head, is I'm going to have to go into my ferrules and pick out a new ferrule so that I can attach it to the shaft so everything fills together very nicely. Now this tip, and another thing that you'll need to know before you start doing repairs of any kind, and again I've been doing it for quite a few years, is you're going to need one of these things. This is called a, uh, it's a Golfworks Multi Shaft Identification Gauge. And this gauge has all the different sizes of tip diameters for irons or for, fer for fairy woods and drivers. And basically what it'll do is it'll slip in here and it'll tell you when it stops that that shaft is a .350. You're going to need to know that because that means that the tailor-made burner hosel is .350. It's very, very critical because the only other way you could get a smaller shaft in here is now you're going to need a tool to convert those together. And that is... I've got one around here somewhere. Anyways, without making it too complicated, it's a, it's a basically, if you have a smaller shaft and you want to get them to secure together, it's an adapter that will fit in there and you can take a smaller size shaft, for example, a, a .335 diameter and make it a 350. It's not something that I really like to do unless I have to do it. I'd rather have the same size shaft to the same size hosel. Okay, now let's talk about the shaft that we're going to install into this tailor-made burner. Uh, I know my stock pretty well. I like to keep a good supply of shafts around you know, in case of an instance like this where one of my students just says, look, it's, you know, I'm getting to the point where I just I need to try something new. And in Zach's case, uh, again, a good golfer. His handicap's coming down. His strength is getting better. Everything about him has improved over this last year of working with him. So. With that being said, what I've chosen to do is I had, this is actually a shaft that is stiffer than the one that he had in his. It is not a stock shaft. This is an NV 75 gram shaft. We're going to go ahead and install it into his club head. I think he's going to like it. Some of this, again, is trial and error. It takes a little bit of time sometimes to find the perfect shaft for you. Now, I'm I'm lucky because one, I know how to do this, two, I have the tools to do it. And long story short, when I first wasn't happy with a driver shaft and didn't feel like I was getting the consistency out of it that I deserved, I tried a shaft, tried another shaft, tried another shaft. I believe it was the fourth shaft. Anyway, I settled on the Graphaloy Pro Launch Platinum shaft, and I really, really like it a lot. It's been a great shaft for me. And I've stuck with it. So in my last, the last couple drivers that I've owned, I've actually installed that shaft into my driver. Now, if I can, if I see shafts out there at the workshops or something new comes out, I'll try to get one or two of them and keep them here in my shop just in case somebody needs a repair. But again, it's very difficult for me from a financial standpoint to go out there and buy every golf shaft that there is for somebody to try. So I'll just try and keep 
a few of those shafts around here in my workshop so that I have the ability to help somebody out when they need a new shaft in their club.